if you still think that you're just an old sinner barely getting by by grace, that's a wrong belief to have. You are a child of God, a saint of God, born again of God, empowered by God to do mighty exploits in the kingdom of God, to bring great glory to God. No longer are you a caterpillar. No longer are you the little worm talked about. In the, you are a child of God, soaring with God. You have lost all aspect of the caterpillar and you've moved into the realm. You're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You have took on the butterfly look. You've got butterfly organs. You've got the DNA of a butterfly. You've got everything of the butterfly. You've got everything that God has given to you and you've been made in the likeness and image of God. Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren to follow. You understand what I'm saying? Look at that diet you got me on. Jesus is finished. What I'm saying is this. I want us to begin to be like God. As a matter of fact, I heard Ellison Bennett said something about that you're not to imitate Jesus. You're supposed to imitate the Godhead. And actually, one portion of Scripture said that God had moved into you when you got born again. There's no deficits. Ephesians 5 doesn't say be imitators of Jesus. It says be imitators of God. And people will raise their hand. Oh, how could I do that? Through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit connected to the Word of the living God operating through, in and through you. Believe in Him. Amen? So what are you thinking tonight? Are you thinking, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to make it through the day. Are you jumping out of bed? I don't care how you're feeling, what's going on, or your bank account, or what your grandmother taught you. We need to start our day off with fresh thinking. Say, devil, I'm awake. Watch out. I'm coming through. No devil, no circumstance will rob me of my godly rights. Well, you see, the reason I like for you to make declarations is because some of you are so hard-headed. And the more you hear it, the more you believe it. The more you hear it, faith arises. You hear me? So, what are you thinking about? Kyle, I want you to start thinking when you go down there to Walmart, you're running your part, you're running your division, whatever you're doing, I want you to think this. I'm a child of God. If I wasn't here, there'd be nothing probably around here but darkness and, and of course, all the other uh, Joyce is there, of course, and uh, Leonard's there. But see, it would be so easy to get caught up in the mundane operation of the job until the, instead of the exciting purpose of your vocation as a man or woman of God to bring light into that circumstance. You hear me? It makes life a lot better whenever you begin to get up and say, man, alive, let me get down to my ministry place today. Uh, they'll pay me to come and minister at Walmart today. They'll pay me to come and release the anointing of God in this place. I'm a child of God. I've been appointed for this time. This is my sector for now and this season. And as long as I'm there, anybody come near me, they'll get healed within my own shadow. No less than Peter. But see, you got to believe that, don't you? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Have you been so crushed in your existence, wherever you live? I mean, my brother, what's your name again from uh, what river? Yes. 
Ronnie. Robbie. Robbie has a tremendous testimony. He comes from White River nine years ago. Jesus met him in his open grave. And he lifted him up and he's been taking him forward ever since. If he had been so inclined to keep the old thinking instead of let God renew his mind through the word and through his presence, then he would have been held down forever. But he's actually been liberated because of the encounter he had with God on that one night. God raised him up, set him free, and had him going on a journey ever since. So he actually believes he's a child of the living God. He actually believes he's called to make a difference. He actually believes the anointing flows through him because it will make a difference in other people's lives where he operates. In his realm of influence, many will come to Christ. You see, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I'm going to tell you what to think. <laughs> Take into it if you want to. First of all, we need spiritual growth in the church. Do we not? And we're getting it. See, it's never the sheep's fault. Sheep normally will go where you tell them to go. It's just for 50 years they hadn't been told to go anywhere. Think about it. And you know what? Some of you may argue this with me. But we ain't went very far. But we are in this season. We're going to make up time. God said, I'm going to redeem your time. I'm going to cause time to speed up. Because I am so desirous to use you on a mighty level to impact mighty men and women of God for me that I've already called that don't even know it. Because I'm going to empower you like never before. And I will do it through my word to impact your thinking. You understand me? So we need to grow up, don't we? We need some growth. And I said, Sunday, if you don't have a vision, if you don't know where you're going, you're already there. If you don't have a purpose to get up for in the morning, if you don't have some kind of plan laid out, then you'll just be going in circles and saying, Honey, what will we do today? Same thing we did yesterday. I'm going to tell you, you need to get before God and let Him give you a vision. You're made to have vision. God created you to have purpose. God created you to have goal-oriented sight. God wants you to see your purpose. Then He wants to empower you to fulfill the purpose that many men and women will come to know Christ because of the body of Christ being empowered with vision. Amen? Now listen, in, when, when there's so much unemployment, there's so much problems going on, it's so easy to fall into a mundane life with no purpose. You say, well, how do I get purpose? Get quiet before God, pray, and He'll speak to your life and He'll give you purpose. I can't give you your purpose. I can excite you, ignite faith in you, to give you the courage to go before the purpose giver and the goal setter, and the one that will give you hunger for the word, and when you do it, you'll have purpose in life. You, you hear me? Y'all are hearing me? Appease me. Remember, I come from Pentecostal background. Growth is spelled G-R-O-W-T-H. Growth. 2 Timothy 2.15, it talks about we need to study the word of the living God. We need to come before God and study to show ourselves a workman, unashamed, one approved of God. Do you have a set plan of study in your life? Are you just going on somebody else's anointing? 